1758, they finally moved in for the first time with their three kids. They brought them in and they moved into this house that we're seeing right here behind us. So the house here is original. This is the real house, the actual house. All the stones that are laid in the masonry work, and actually a surprising, for reasons I'll explain later, a surprising number of the features that you're looking at are original. They haven't changed since that time. For, again, for, for reasons that can be explained. It's very unusual for a house like this to be so untouched and unchanged over this many centuries. But everything you're looking at, totally real. When we came here, this is another part of the story we'll get to later, but when we came here in the 1970s and established this place as a museum, it had been a working farm for a couple of centuries. You're having trouble if you were by yourself doing this walking ladder. You're really out of it. But you can come up here. Volunteers that are all guarded all the time. They're guarded only. And they come here every week and they get busy and they weed and they root and they really nurture and take excellent care of these plants. So right now it looks like the eternal. Lettuce. Lettuce. Um, usually by the end of the summer, the garden is starting to overflow and it's starting to produce. And the smokehouse is a little stone building, as you can see, with a closed, really thick stone walls and a closed little chamber, except for just the one window inside with the tile roof. And what you would do with the smokehouse is we actually have a, this is a working smokehouse, we actually use this. Our smoke meister on the site, who is also our head archaeologist, will come out here sometimes and light a fire, and then put the fire out, let it smolder, and just sit out here feeding it with hickory chips and, and monitoring it so it doesn't spark up into a blaze, but it's just to start smoking all afternoon. And the rest of us will come and hang meats and cheese and things like that.